Welcome dear friends to my video lecture on structural functionalism functionalism structural functionalism that is in sociology of education that is uh, given in unit 1 of net education or trb education that we are going to uh, learn just now i would like to give some important insights as well as some questions related to the topic Thank you for your presence. God bless you abundantly. Structural functionalism in sociology of education. Structural functionalism is a key theory in sociology, mainly developed by Emil Durkheim and Talcott Parsons. Of course, two, two important persons, Emil Durkheim and Talcott Parsons. In sociology of education, it explains how education helps a society function. How society functions, you know, that is what is concerned about, you know, the structural functionalism. So, structural functionalism explains how education helps society function or uh, how uh, education uh, activates the functions of the society. This theory stresses that institutions like education work together to maintain social order. So, social order is the key word in uh, structural functionalism, social order. What are the core tenets of structural functionalism? In other words, what are the core principles of structural functionalism? Structural functionalism sees society as a complex system with the different parts that work together for stability. So, structure, no? of course we know the structure, uh, structural approach and all we are just uh, talking about no? in uh, technology. So, that way, uh, yeah, just a minute. Yeah. Structural functionalism sees society as a complex system with the different parts that work together for stability, order, social order. These parts include family, education, government, economy and religion, all of which are essential for society's survival. Structural functionalists believe that social institutions exist to help society run smoothly in an orderly way. In education, structural functionalism focuses on how schools socialize individuals, transmit culture and promote social unity. This theory is based on three main principles. Society as a system of interrelated parts. Society is like an organism with institutions like education that each play a role in maintaining stability, similar to how organs keep the body alive. Then functional prerequisites. Structural functionalists believe every society has basic needs that must be met to survive. Education meets these needs by socializing individuals, preparing them for roles and fostering unity. The third thing is a value consensus. Society works because the people share common values and norms. Education maintains this value consensus by teaching shared norms and values which promote social unity and prevent societal breakdown. So once again I repeat uh, this theory that is structural functionalism theory based on three principles. Society as a system of interrelated parts. Then there are prerequisites, functional prerequisites. Then value consensus. I go, of course, you understood some insights. Structural functionalism and the sociology of education, how they are interrelated. In sociology of education, structural functionalism shows how education helps maintain society. Schools socialize, integrate and transmit culture to students. Education as a means of socialization, according to structural functionalism theory, education is a means of uh, socialization. According to structural functionalism, education's main role is to socialize children by teaching them societal values, norms and skills. Emily Durkheim 
emphasize that education teaches us uh, teaches societal norms to maintain social unity the transmission of culture and values another important thing in uh, structural functionalism education passes on culture and shared values from one generation to the next schools connect family and society ensuring children learn cultural norms which helps maintain social order social order is the key word in Uh, structural functionalism role allocation and social stratification <coughs> what are the functions of this uh, uh, what are the functions of the society according to structural functionalism role allocation and social stratification education helps allocate social roles by sorting individuals based on their abilities talcott parson saw schools as meritocratic rewarding students based on talent and hard work thus promoting social mobility then fostering social cohesion and integration education fosters social cohesion by bringing together diverse individuals and providing shared values and experiences schools help prevent social division by promoting a sense of belonging next one uh, you know uh, let, let us just analyze what are the criticism of structural functionalism in education though structural functionalism offers a valuable insights it faces uh, certain criticisms also that is a uh, uh, reproduction of social inequality inequality is maintained you know it is not going you know according to this theory critics argue that uh, education often reproduces social inequalities rather than providing equal opportunities for all this is one of the criticism given by other experts critics argue that education often reproduces social inequalities rather than providing equal opportunities for all and also structural uh, functionalism theory ignores a conflict and power dynamics structural functionalism focuses on positive functions of education goody goody things no always good something like so it overlooks a conflict which can reinforce existing power structures and inequality so structural functionalism theory doesn't talk about evil things in the uh, society or in education even so it uh, maintains or reinforces existing power structures and inequalities that is another criticism it ignores conflict and power dynamics third one lack of attention to individual agency this approach views the individuals as passive recipients of socialization overlooking individual agency and resistance within educational experiences so lack of attention to individual agency and also uh, structural functionalism neglects changes in educational systems structural functionalism presents education as stable and unchanging which fails to account for the dynamic nature of educational system so it present education as stable and unchanging uh, as if there is no evil at all no that is the idea here so it neglect changes in educational system so what you could give as a concluding remarks structural functionalism is helpful for understanding how education maintains a social order and promotes social unity however it has been criticized for ignoring social inequalities power dynamics individual agencies and the educational changes despite these limits structural functionalism remains a useful approach when combined with other perspectives like conflict theory and interactionism interactionism so uh, i hope you understood this these are the concluding remarks let us analyze some of the questions connected with this topic what is the primary focus of structural functionalism in sociology social conflict social stability individual agency economic inequality that is social stability structural functionalism views society as a system of interrelated parts working together to maintain social order and stability in, in other words social order is the key word here who is considered a key figure in developing the structural functionalist perspective karl marx max weber uh, emil Uh, Dotkin, Herbert Spencer, Emil Dotkin, 
Durkheim was a central figure in developing structural functionalism, especially regarding education's role in maintaining social unity or social cohesion. According to structural functionalism, education primarily serves which function? Promoting social change, reproducing social inequality, socializing individuals, encouraging political activism. That is socializing individuals. Education socializes individuals by teaching them societal norms, values and skills needed to function in society. Which of the following is not a tenet of structural functionalism? <coughs> so society functions as an interrelated system. Institutions maintain social order. Social change is constant and inevitable. Society has functional prerequisites. You know, which of the following is not a tenet of structural functionalism. That is, social change is constant and inevitable. Structural functionalism emphasizes stability and order, focusing on how institutions work to prevent rapid social change. That means that they don't believe in the uh, social change, in other words. And then they try to, uh, you know, prevent rapid social change. The structural functionalism experts. What role does the education play in role allocation according to Talcott portions? What role does education play in role allocation? Identifying and rewarding individual talents, promoting economic growth, reinforcing social stratification, teaching practical skills for employment. What role does education play in role allocation according to Talcott portions? That is identifying and rewarding individual talents. Role allocation refers to schools sorting individuals based on talents and preparing them for appropriate social roles. That is role allocation according to structural functionalism theory. What is the term value consensus referred to in structural functionalism? Conflict between individual and societal values, shared values and norms that bind society, the competition between different cultural values, the evolution of societal norms over time. So what is the term value consensus referred to in structural functionalism? That is shared values and norms that bind society. Value consensus means that individuals share common beliefs and values which are crucial for societal stability or social order. How does cultural functionalism view the relationship between education and culture? Education transforms culture, education transmits culture, education criticizes culture, education undermines culture. How does structural functionalism view the relationship between education and culture? Education transmits culture. That is the understanding of this theory, structural functionalism theory. Education serves to pass on cultural norms and values from one generation to the next, ensuring societal continuity. Which of the following is a key criticism of structural functionalism? It ignores the stability in society. It focuses too much on individual choice. It overlooks the role of conflict in education. It emphasizes social change over stability. So which of the following is a key criticism of structural functionalism? It overlooks or it neglects the role of conflict in education. So it keeps uh, education as if unchanging and absolutely no disorder or conflict etc. So it is stable and then unchanged, you know, that is the idea it has. So it overlooks the role of conflict in education. Critics argue that structural functionalism neglects how education can reproduce inequality and power dynamics. Which sociologist introduced the concept of meritocracy in education? Karl Marx, Max Weber, Tolcott Parsons, Pierre Bourdieu. Talcott Parsons. Parsons introduced the idea that schools operate on meritocratic principles rewarding individual ability and effort. What is meant by social stratification in the context of education? The division of society in social classes, the upward mobility of individuals through education, the equal distribution of resources, the elimination of class distinctions. What is the idea here? What is meant by social stratification in the context of education? That is the division of society into social classes. 
social stratification refers to the hierarchical arrangement of individuals into different social classes often influenced by education according to structural functionalism schools help to maintain social cohesion by dividing students into competing groups teaching shared cultural values encouraging rebellion against authority focusing on individual success over collective goals so according to structural functionalism schools help to maintain social cohesion by teaching shared cultural values schools promote social cohesion social unity by promoting a common educational experience and instilling in the minds of the students shared values common values what function of education is emphasized by emil durkheim teaching critical thinking promoting individuality socializing individuals into societal norms encouraging political change what function of education is emphasized by emil durkheim socializing individuals into societal norms durkheim explained that education teaches Durkheim emphasized that education teaches children societal values and norms which are essential for maintaining social solidarity. In structural functionalism, how is education related to social mobility? In structural functionalism, how is education related to social mobility? Education hinders social mobility. Education provides opportunities for social mobility. Education eliminates class differences. Education has no effect on social mobility. What is the correct answer? Education provides opportunities for social mobility. Structural functionalists believe education enables individuals to move up the social hierarchy based on talent and effort. So structural functionalism believe education helps individuals to move up the social hierarchy based on talent and effort. What is the criticism related to the idea of meritocracy in education? I mean giving awards to the talented children. What is the criticism related to the idea of meritocracy in education? Meritocracy promotes inequality. Meritocracy does not consider inherent inequalities in resources. Meritocracy is too focused on conflict. Meritocracy encourages social mobility. See, meritocracy does not consider inherent inequalities in resources. There is so much uh, evil, no, inequalities, it doesn't bother about it, meritocracy. Those who are talented, uh, you know, simply they are awarded. But what about the poor children who can't afford to have certain facilities at home? So that is the criticism here. Meritocracy means uh, the children who are very much uh, talented and uh, who exhibit uh, yeah, great uh, great skills, etc. But then these skills uh, these children get because of uh, you know uh, sufficient uh, resources they have at home. But what about the children who are not having the resources? That is the idea here. Meritocracy does not consider inherent inequalities in resources. Critics argue that structural functionalism's meritocratic view ignores the fact that not all students have equal access to resources. Which of the following is considered a functional prerequisite in society? Functional prerequisite. Political change, reproduction of social inequality, socialization, conflict resolution, that is socialization. That is a functional prerequisite in structural functionalism. Socialization is a basic need that institutions like education fulfill to ensure the smooth functioning of society. Which of the following functions does education not fulfill according to structural functionalist? Teaching discipline, challenging social norms, preparing individuals for social roles, promoting social integration. Which of these functions does education not fulfill according to structural functionalism? Challenging social norms. Structural functionalism sees education as a tool to transmit and reinforce, not challenge social societal norms. What does structural functionalism emphasize in society? Conflict and power struggles, individual freedom and creativity, stability and harmony among institutions, inequality and injustice. So, structural functionalism emphasizes in society stability and harmony among institutions. It overlooks any inequality in the institutions. 
Structure of functionalism are views institutions as working together harmoniously to maintain social stability. What do structural functionalists believe about societal institutions? What do structural functionalists believe about the societal institutions? Institutions are in constant conflict. Institutions function independently. Institutions are interrelated and contribute to societal stability. Institutions focus focus only on individual needs. So what is the answer? You know what do structural functionalists believe about societal institutions? Institutions are interrelated and contribute to societal stability. Structural functionalists believe that institutions like education, family and government work together to maintain social order. Which of the following is an example of role allocation in education? Teaching students moral values, sorting students into different career paths based on ability, promoting critical thinking skills, encouraging creativity and individuality. So which of the following is an example of role allocation in education that is sorting, I mean separating students into different career paths based on ability. Role allocation refers to the process by which education identifies individual talents and prepares them for specific roles in society. Structural functionalism has been criticized for what? Ignoring the positive functions of education, overemphasizing social conflict in education, focusing too much on the positive functions of education, advocating for rapid social change. So structural functionalism has been criticized for focusing too much on the positive functions of education. There are some negative things also which uh, uh, structural functionalism overlooks, neglects in other words. Critics argue that structural functionalism focuses on the positive aspects of education, ignoring how it can perpetuate and maintain inequality in the institutions. What term describes the shared beliefs and values that bind society together? What term describes the shared beliefs and values that bind society together? Collective conscience, meritocracy, social stratification, social mobility. Collective conscience, Durkim or Durkim referred to shared societal beliefs and values as the collective conscience essential for <coughs> social cohesion, social unity. How do critics view the role of education in maintaining power structures? Education promotes equality among all social classes. Education serves the interest of dominant classes. Education encourages social mobility and change. Education focus, focuses solely on individual achievement. How do critics view the role of education in maintaining power structures? Education serves the interest of dominant classes according to structural, uh, I mean the critics, I mean they, they actually uh, the structural functionalism theory holds true with regard to uh, serving the interest of dominant classes. But the critics say that <coughs> education serves the interest of dominant classes, uh, <coughs> that is the idea here. Critics, particularly Marxists, argue that education maintains the power of dominant classes by reproducing capitalist ideology. So what is the question? How do critics view the role of education in maintaining power structures? It uh, keeps on, you know, uh, it just maintains. It perpetuates inequalities in education institutions. That is the idea critics have. <coughs> what does meritocracy refer to in the context of education? What does meritocracy refer to in the context of education? Equal opportunities for all, rewards based on individual abilities and efforts, a system where everyone receives the same education, social hierarchy based on inherited wealth. What is the correct answer? What does meritocracy refer to in the context of education? Rewards based on individual abilities and efforts. Meritocracy refers to a system in which individuals are rewarded based on their abilities and efforts by proposing by Talcott Parsons. Which of the following is a positive function of education from the structural functionalist perspective? Which of the following is a positive function of education from the structural functionalist perspective? Encouraging rebellion against the system, promoting social integration, fostering individualism, 
eliminating all social inequalities. So which of the following is a positive function of education promoting social integration. Structural functionalist view education as promoting social integration by bringing individuals together and instilling common values to the, in the students. <coughs> what a structural functionalism often overlooked in the analysis, in its analysis of education. What a structural functionalism often overlooked, neglect in its analysis of education. The role of social institutions in maintaining stability, the process of socialization in schools, how education can reproduce social inequality, the role of schools in fostering social cohesion. So structural functionalism often overlooks <coughs> how education can reproduce social inequality. Critics argue that structural functionalism fails to recognize how education can perpetuate social inequalities, particularly related to class, race and gender. <coughs> Thank you very much dear friends. God bless you abundantly. Thank you for your presence. Kindly <coughs> subscribe if you wish. Give your comments. <coughs> give your suggestions also so that I am able to uh, give more and more fruitful videos for you so that you are able to crack net education and TRB education. God bless you abundantly. Let us meet in other video lectures.